Currently, 24 countries are attempting to form a strategic alliance that will compete with the US dollar's long-standing status as the world's reserve currency. The five economies that make up the BRICS organization are apparently about to undergo a significant expansion. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa make up the core collective. If additional countries express interest in joining the alliance, the total number of members would rise to 24. Anil Sukul, the ambassador for South Africa to the BRICS, tells Bloomberg that a large number of countries are now interested in joining. According to Sukul, the list consists of 13 nations that have officially requested membership in the alliance and an additional six nations that have made informal requests to join. Saudi Arabia, Iran, Argentina, the United Arab Emirates, Algeria, Egypt, Bahrain, Indonesia, two unnamed East African countries, and one unnamed West African country are among the known entrants. South Africa joined the BRICS group in 2010 after the organization's founding in 2006. The BRICS nations are reportedly in the early stages of creating a new global currency that would replace the US dollar, according to the state-owned news agency Sputnik in Russia. According to Alexander Babakov, deputy chairman of the Russian stake Duma, the new fiat currency will probably be backed by other assets, such as gold and other precious metals. Since the next BRICS summit is scheduled to take place in South Africa in late August, more information should become available by the summer. China's cross-border payments and receipts in local currency surged to a record high of 48% at the end of March from practically nil at the end of 2010, according to an analysis by Bloomberg Intelligence using data from the State Administration of Foreign Exchange. The findings show that throughout the same time frame, the dollar's share dropped from 83% to 47%. However, the percentage is established based on the total number of transactions. This covers the trading of securities over the conduits connecting the financial systems of Hong Kong and the People's Republic of China. Stephen Chu, head of BI's Asia Foreign Exchange and Rate Strategy, provided some details on the subject by saying, the increase in the use of the yuan may be a natural result of China opening up its capital account, with rising inflows for Chinese bonds and outflows for Hong Kong stocks. This pattern is probably going to continue. The State Council announced on April 25 that China will expand the Is the dollar's hegemony about to be upset by the Chinese yuan? Russian smartphone sales are dominated by Chinese brands. The aforementioned development, while undoubtedly a move in the right direction to prevent the dollar from falling, is rather delicate. According to Chris Lung, an economist at DBS Bank, Yuan internationalization is accelerating as other nations look for other payment currencies to spread risk and as the Federal Reserve's credibility is declining. The Yuan's share in international payments may be insignificant for all time, but we are still a long way from dollar dominance. SWIFT reports that in March, the percentage of international payments made in the Chinese Yuan remained basically steady at 2.3%. This news is released despite the Chinese Yuan's decline in value relative to the US dollar. The central parity rate of the Chinese Yuan or Renminbi declined 390 pip points to 690, 237 versus the dollar on April 26, according to data from the China Foreign Exchange Trade System. More recently, Larry Summers, a former Treasury Secretary, rejected claims that the Chinese yuan posed a threat to the dollar. Summers claimed that Chinese markets were unreliable. Despite being restrained by limits, there has never been a nation with such a strong desire to shift as much capital out of the country as we are seeing in China at the moment. Is that actually what will happen? How come the Chinese yuan is pegged? Since 1994, there has been a peg to the value of the Chinese yuan. The yuan's value remains low in comparison to other currencies thanks to this strategy. China's products are less expensive and, as a result, more desirable when compared to those of other countries, which has an impact on commerce. China ensures its economic prosperity by encouraging consumers worldwide to buy its products. Consumers paying with other currencies can purchase more of China's goods than they would be able to if the yuan were more expensive as long as a currency peg keeps it cheap in relation to other currencies. To be more precise, consumers using the dollar will be able to purchase more Chinese exports if the People's Bank of China keeps the yuan weak against the dollar. Because they represent money entering a country, exports are a key economic factor. The People's Bank of China acquires foreign currency in order to maintain the yuan at an artificially low level and encourage vigorous export activity. The Central Bank of China's Foreign Exchange Reserves, 
excluding gold, increased significantly from around $600 billion to $3.8 trillion over the course of the 10 years from December 2004 to December 2014. China's economy has consistently experienced solid growth rates of more than 10 percent over the past 20 years thanks in large part to currency manipulation. The industrial sector in China has performed especially well. In 2010, the country overtook China as the largest manufacturer in the world, according to the Congressional Research Service. China's gross domestic product, GDP, per capita expanded by more than 2,000 percent in 25 years, from $473 in 1994 to $10,262 in 2019, thanks to strong development. In contrast, the GDP per person in the United Kingdom only grew by 115% over the same time span. The Congressional Research Service cited estimates from the UN that said China has seized a 25% to 26% portion of the world's manufacturing output since 2014. Even though these data points are in favor of China, not everyone feels the same way. Manufacturers and workers in the United States have expressed dissatisfaction over China's trade surplus, alleging that Chinese firms now enjoy an unfair advantage as a result of the yuan peg. U.S. politicians have consequently demanded that China's currency be revalued. Yuan pegging opponents may be oversimplifying the situation, notwithstanding their complaints. There are advantages to an artificially low yuan. Because of the currency peg, Chinese goods are less expensive for American consumers, a development that may help keep overall inflation at a moderate level. The advantages of cheaper items also apply to enterprises. American businesses benefit from lower production costs when they use cheaper Chinese imports to make their products, with fewer costs. Since they force capital to flow from China to the United States, China's trade deficits also benefit the overall economy. The purchase of interest-bearing securities like U.S. Treasury bonds with this foreign capital drives down borrowing rates and promotes more robust investments. Lower interest rates also promote economic expansion. China's successful strategy. Pegging the yuan is a calculated policy choice that has significant advantages for the Chinese economy. With this strategy, the People's Bank of China helps China achieve greater prosperity by boosting the appeal of Chinese exports on the international market. While many governments employ expansionary measures in the hopes that they will produce the desired effects, China has demonstrated the effectiveness of its fixed exchange rate system. Utilize our free stock simulator to put your trading abilities to the test. Trade your way to the top while competing against hundreds of other Investopedia traders. Before risking your personal money, place trades in a virtual environment. Practice your trading techniques so that you will have the necessary experience when it comes time to enter the real market. Try out our stock simulator right away. Argentina will use yuan instead of dollars to pay for Chinese imports. Argentina will settle payments for imports from China in yuan rather than US dollars, the country's economy minister Sergio Massa announced during a press conference on April 26. He noted that the action indicates greater bilateral commercial ties. Argentina will use the yuan for imports from China totaling roughly 1.04 billion US dollars this month after reaching an agreement with a number of businesses. This will speed up imports from China in the coming months, as the move is anticipated to boost efficiency by shortening the permission process. Argentina anticipates using the yuan for imports from China valued at $790 million to $1 billion beginning in May. According to Massa, using yuan as payment not only promotes the growth of global reserves, but also enables bilateral trade and increases flexibility. Stronger commercial and trade ties between China and Argentina are a crucial component of their overall strategic partnership, according to Chinese ambassador to Argentina Zhu Kaiali, who also noted that the exchange had great potential for both nations. The joint declaration made during President Alberto Fernandez's visit to China last year shows that China supports Argentina's efforts to maintain economic and financial stability, Xu continued. Argentina and China increased their currency swap arrangement formally at the beginning of this year, according to the Central Bank of Argentina. This strengthened Argentina's current 130 billion yuan, 19.5 billion US dollars, foreign exchange reserve and activated a 35 billion yuan disposable amount.